change. And you also have an assignment where you have to sort of do some investigating on your own and come up with a list of guidelines and in addition come up with some examples of sites that you think are well designed and sites that you think are poorly designed. What I'd like to do now is sort of summarize that and, and sort of propose a definition for what constitutes a well-designed website that's probably different than most folks define it. Um, I would say that a well-designed website is a is a website that helps the user and the organization achieve their goals. Okay? Now, keep in mind that there's all sorts of websites. Not all of them are run by organizations. There's websites that are run for just people for their hobbies. All right? But when I say the organization, I mean whoever is sponsoring the website, whoever is creating the website. So a well-designed website helps the users of the site and I'll say the sponsors of the site. And the sponsors of the site achieve their goals. So, nothing about font, nothing about color, nothing about animations, nothing about images, nothing about white space, and so on. Does that mean that that's not important? No. It's simply prioritizing the whole reason why people are going to your website. Folks don't go to your website to admire how pretty it looks or how nice it looks or how clever of a designer you are. People go to your website to achieve some goal. All right? and, and the goal could be a small goal, but they go to achieve their goal. Let me give you a great example. I was looking for, I was going to meet someone for lunch yesterday at like around 1.30. So like the near west side, so like Avon Lake, um, Rocky River, that area. So I wanted to find a restaurant to go to. I went around looking, you know, I asked people for recommendations, I did some Google searches and all that. Now, what do you think my goal was yesterday to try to find a restaurant? Well, it was to try to find a restaurant. Duh. All right. What information would help me achieve that goal? What kind of food, you're in the mood for? What kind of food I'm in the mood for. All right. What else would help me achieve the goal? The atmosphere. The location. Price. Yeah, we probably should have said that one first, right? <laughs> if they have liquor or not. If they have liquor or not. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I, that was not a factor, but that could be a factor. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, atmosphere, in other words. In other words, if you, if, if, depending on why we were meeting, you might want a quieter place or a louder place. Like if we were, if I was meeting friends to watch the football game, we might not care if if it's noisy. In fact, we'd prefer it to be noisy, probably. There, th these are all great things. So I know my goal is to do this, is to find a restaurant. But these are all pieces of information that are going to help me decide that. Now, you guys are, did a great job, but you missed one important fact. Uh, one important piece of information I was looking for that would help me make my decision. If they are open at that time. You do not know the frustration I went through looking, trying to determine, because I was trying to avoid like a chain restaurant, all right? And so I was looking at, you know, more single-owned, mom-and-pop, as they would say, local sort of restaurants. It was amazing how hard I had to look on some of the sites to determine if they were open or not, all right? I would think that that was... Even above all those other things, if it isn't open, you can't go there. 
I would think that would be splashed so obviously on every restaurant's homepage, but it wasn't. All right, and um, in that regard, the design of their websites failed for me because number one, either it wasn't there, if it wasn't there, that was bad. Number two, if it was there but I had to search, well, guess who isn't really patient when it comes to clicking around and trying to find the hours a restaurant is open? Me, as would many people, all right? Uh, and then, of course, I, I did seem to find out that most mom and pop restaurants are not open for lunch on, uh, you, know, you know, the ones that I were looking at weren't open, as it turned out. But again, that's another, uh, that's another issue. All right, so an important thing to recognize is both the restaurant and the user have goals in this case. My goal is to find some place to eat. Their goal is to attract more customers. All right. There has to be some kind of um, intersection of the goals. If there isn't, then what's the point? All right. If I went to a website about food, for example, about restaurants, and it had the chef's biography on there, and it had the menu, and it had all these great things, but I couldn't get the answer to a simple question of, are they open at the time I'm planning on going, then that site isn't well des designed. All right? And it neither achieves my goals or their goals. There has to be some kind of overlap. Let's go the other direction. Let's say a band has a website and they put all their music that they've ever made available to download on that site for free. Well, that would achieve, yeah, I'd say that would achieve the goal of the, of the users, right? That would be great. If it was a band you like, you'd get all their music for absolutely for free, right? But it probably wouldn't be achieving the goal of the band. On the other hand, maybe it would, right? If your music gets out there, perhaps, if you're a young and struggling band, perhaps you'll build a fan base and then eventually you'll be able to make money selling t-shirts or whatever, all right? The point is, is that both the organization that sponsored the website and the users have goals. And those goals need to be addressed and met for the site to be successful. If the goals of one or the other of the group are not met, then the site will not be successful. All right? So this is my starting point for developing a good website, designing a good website. Is if it helps the user and the sponsors of the site achieve their goals. Now, how are we going to come up with this? All right? Notice that, again, there's no mention of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, anything like that. There's no mention of technology. It's all about goals. So how are we going to achieve this? Well, the first thing that we have to do, in order to achieve the goals, we better identify the goals. Now that sounds dumb and that sounds almost like too obvious, you know, to, to even bother with mentioning. But there are a lot of sites where you look at and you are not necessarily clear on what the goals are. All right? And it's clear that the person designing the site didn't spend a lot of time thinking about that. Now the goals can be any number of different things, you know. Um, I mentioned a, a case uh, of an online jewelry store. Their goal might not be to sell jewelry online. Their goal might be to attract more people into their business. All right. So for one site, their goal might be to have a successful e-commerce business where they're selling stuff online. For another site, it might be to drive interest for their um, physical store. All right. And the goals for the users might vary too. But you better try identifying them all right, because you're probably not going to accidentally stumble across the, across the goals if you haven't deliberately thought about them. Second thing is to identify what would 
help achieve those goals. All right. And again, we went through that exercise when we talked about the restaurant. We, list all the, we listed all the things that would help the restaurant, or help me as a consumer decide whether to eat in a particular restaurant or not. The price, the location, the atmosphere, the kind of food, the hours that they're open, all those things are information that are factors in helping me decide if I want to go there or not. So my goal, let's say, simply put, is to find a place to have lunch in this particular case. All right. The stuff that the website could have to help me make that decision would be things like the price, the kind of food that they serve, the location, the hours, and so on. All right. In business, they talk about like um, strategy, and then they talk about um, um, oh, what's the middle one? Strategy, something, and then tactics. Is anyone familiar with that? Strategy, oh, there's a middle phrase in there, middle word in there, and then tactics. In other words, you start with the big picture, and then you get more and more narrowly focused on the specific things you're going to do. All right? If you don't have the vision of what you want to achieve, then you're not going to come up with what it's going to take to achieve those goals, achieve that big picture. Third thing is... How are we going to organize the information to help achieve those goals? Now, th there could be a success or failure on this as well, right? For the websites that had the hours that they were open, somewhere buried on the site, where if I clicked the right 16 times, I ended up on the page that had the hours. They knew that I needed the hours to achieve my goals. What they didn't think about is how to effectively organize that, like where that belongs. And I would argue that belongs on the home page, very first page, all right? So I don't have to dig for it, all right? So once you've identified what the goals are and identified what you want to put on your site to help achieve those goals, how are you going to organize it in a way that's going to help the user find the stuff that they want effectively? All right. For example, you know, almost all these restaurants had menus on there, which is great. A, a, a menu gives you a lot of information about a restaurant, right? It tells you, um, you know, what kind of food they have, and it tells you what kind of prices are. So, you know, that, uh, glancing at a menu is a really good idea to um, to to determine if you want to go uh, to there to eat. Should the menu be on the home page, though? Probably not. Why not? Exactly. If you try to put too much stuff on the home page, you're going to clutter it. Now, there's going to be some things that are probably even more important than the specific menu in determining if I want to go to there or not. All right? For example, where it's located. I might find the absolute perfect restaurant that's open right at the right time, that's reasonably priced and so on, but if it's in Dayton, I'm not going to drive down to Dayton to, to, for lunch. All right. So something like the location, and then maybe some vague idea of the kind of food. Maybe, for example, I'm in the mood for Italian food. If I see Italian food, okay. I'm going to go, and then I can dig further and get to the menu. All right. The point is, is that the organization of it is also very important in addition to determining what you're going to have on the site. Finally, we get into individual page layout. In other words, how am I going to lay out each individual page that I'm presented to the user in a way that will help them achieve their goals. Finally, You build a model of the site to look at it. This is a process that we're going to go through. And um, 
the process that we're going to go through is, is a pretty common process in web development. There's a book that sort of describes it called The Elements of User Experience uh, by a, uh, a writer named Jesse James Garrett. And it's probably in our library, and I may even have a copy if you're interested. But it details a process to get to that end, the end being a well-designed website. And in general terms, you go through these five steps. And that's the steps that we'll go through in doing our project. All right. So let's go and let's look at, um, in Canvas, let's look at um, the documents about the project and we'll then examine the process and the document that you're going to perform. One of my other main points here is that this doesn't happen by accident. In other words, you're not going to sit down and start whipping up HTML pages and come up with a well-designed site. Well-designed sites, like any other big activity, requires planning and requires a thought process. And at every point of the way, you have choices. What are the most important goals of the organization? What do you think the most important goals of the user are? Now, to be sure, you can't always be 100% correct. All right, especially if you're guessing what the needs of the users are. But you can have a pretty good idea, and you can at least take a shot at it. All right, really, the skill of a good designer is having good insight in that, being able to put themselves in the shoes of the user and trying to see, well, this is what, if I were visiting this site, this is what I would be looking for. So let's look at. If we go down here, there should be a section for the project. Let's look first of all at the overview, overview of the project. I have to say, I don't like waiting on websites, but if I'm being entertained by a panda on a unicycle, that does help a little bit. Maybe not this much, but. A lot of them do, yeah. And I really don't know why it's taking this long. Let me download it. There we go. All right, you're to create a small website. I am not going to do what I hate when other people do, and that is to read every word. You can read this on your own, and, and I hope you have read it already. All right. Oh, then maybe I do need to read it to you. All right. Pick whatever topic you want. Don't agonize over the topic. In other words, I, I've had people that have told me I haven't started working on it because I just can't think of a topic. And I, I guess I can understand that. I mean, sometimes it's tough when you have uh, a, an empty slate and you can do whatever you want. But believe me, if you're, that, that shouldn't be the hardest part of the project, is coming up with a topic. Um, if you need help coming up with a topic, let me know. Usually most people have a good, have at least some idea of what they want to do. And the point of discussing it with me then is to either broaden it or narrow it down. All right. So like if you were going to do, if you said you wanted to do a website about science. Well, 
you probably can't cover everything about science in a six to eight page website. All right. So we might look at narrowing it down to focus on a particular aspect of science. You know, the lunar eclipse that was yesterday. Maybe that would be a, a, a topic where we've taken your main sort of initial thought and narrowed it down a little bit. Now the reverse is also true. Um, you, you, in some cases you can come up with a topic that's way too specific and you need to broaden it a little bit, you know. Um, you know, there's only so much you can say about certain topics. Like, you know, you might think of doing a site about the Browns game yesterday. Well, I'm not sure if that is worth six to eight pages worth, all right? So maybe instead you look at the Browns season or the history of the Browns or week two in the NFL or something like that. Yeah, right, exactly. It would just be one page, yeah. It was grim. Yeah. So at any rate, your key is to figure out a, a good topic, and a good topic is one that you can reasonably represent in six to eight pages. Now, if you're not sure about this, let's talk about it, and we can take whatever topic that you have, and we can either broaden it or narrow it to fit within this. All right? You should pick something that you enjoy. And again, I, I hear the complaint more often than, uh, than, than I would expect that I can't think of one. Don't agonize about it. Just think of anything. I mean, we're doing, you know, I, I, I've been using an example in this class and other classes, my rabbits. All right? It doesn't have to be some, like, profound, uh, you know, intellectual sort of topic. It just has to be one that you could imagine there being a website for and it's appropriate for a college uh, level course. Does anyone give it any thought about what they would like to do their project on? Yes? I'll probably do it on Vikings. Vikings. Alright, excellent. Alright, um, anyone else? On? My pets. My pets, okay. Alright, anyone else? Portfolio. All right. Anyone else? End of World War One. All right. Anyone else? Uh, not to put you on the spot, but if you haven't, that's okay. But you should start thinking about that. All right. And again, all these sound like reasonably good topics, like. For example, a student that said end of World War I. No, it's not going to talk about World War I because that could be a gigantic site, but maybe focusing on one aspect of it. Talking about my pets instead of, uh, you know, everyone in the world possible things that you have as a pet. Talking about Vikings instead of the history of Europe. All right? Talking about a portfolio for me instead of, um, you know, um, you know, all the photography in the world or, or, or a general site about everything dealing with graphic design. All those are good examples of, of that. All right? These are the three things. Technically sound, well designed, effectively communicates the intended message. And again, these things all relate to the three pillars of web design, right? Content, design, and technical. Any of those pillars fall, the site is going to fail, right? If you haven't, if you don't have good content, good engaging content for folks, people aren't going to visit your site and it's not going to be worthwhile. If you have good material, but it's not designed in a way where people can easily find the stuff that they're looking for and it's hard to read and so on, then your site's not going to be successful either. Finally, if your site is not done technically correct, in other words, your tags aren't right, um, your links don't work, your images don't work, um, it doesn't work on certain browsers and so on and so forth. You could have done a, a good job on the other things, but your site still won't be successful. 
All right, you, tur you turn in the project in two parts. A design document prototype and then the final deliverable. Think of this as being like the rough draft and the final version of the paper. All right? So you have your plan and then you have your final turn-in. Now the final turn-in, that one's the obvious one. You're going to give me all the files associated with your project just like you give me all the files associated with any of your assignments. All right? So the final deliverable is simply all your web pages, images, CSS files, etc. What we're going to focus on looking at is the design, because the design is a document. You can do it in Word, um, and what it will do is it will be your plan for developing your website. And in the plan, We're going to address those things that we talked about over here. What are the goals? What are we going to put on the site to help achieve those goals? How are we going to organize that information? What's the page layout going to be? And then finally, create a model. All right? In other words, create a couple of pages as samples of what your page, what your site is going to look like. So that is the design document, and it has five sections. When you say create a few pages as your intended goal, are you referring to a box layout in terms of a quickly coded one, a sketch? It actually will be in HTML pages, all right, but they don't need to be complete. All right, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the prototype phase. All right, so there's five phases to this design, and the first one is strategy. And strategy is where we define the goals of the site. All right. What are the goals? What could be the goals of someone visiting a restaurant's website? Or let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Let's identify some hypothetical people that could be visiting a restaurant's website. All right? I'll give you the first one. Guy looking for a restaurant to meet someone for lunch. All right, that's one example of kind of person that would be visiting a restaurant's website. Now, that might seem at first glance to be the only kind of person that's going to be visiting that site. All right? But what other kinds of people could be visiting the site? What could be other goals of someone visiting the site or other kinds of visitors to the site? Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe looking for um, celebrating a specific event. All right. All right. We'll come to that in, in a second. Let, let's identify. Let's identify sort of the reasons why you could be doing that. And in your case, you said taking your grandparents after church. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's Mother's Day or, or some grandmother's day or some special occasion. And so that's a little different than this, right? I mean, it's similar, but it is also a little bit different. What would be another possibility of, 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 of kinds of people that would be visiting a restaurant site?
That is a that is a good one. People like people of certain religions have certain dietary restrictions, um, and that would be a, an excellent one to say that one potential visitor would be someone with dietary restrictions, and. And that could be people that have dietary uh, restrictions for religious reasons. It could be people that have certain allergies or uh, intolerance to certain kinds of food. Could be someone that is a vegetarian, vegetarian or vegan. Could be any of, of these things. So we'll put them in there. I would think visiting a website would be very useful for them because if you are uh, a vegan and you notice every single item in the menu is deep fried and lard, you probably want to avoid that restaurant, all right? Or you might want to look to see if they have, you know, you might, another restaurant that has several options might be better than one that only has like salad as an option for that. What's another kind of type of person that might be visiting a site of a restaurant? Out of town, good. All right, we could do this for a while, right? And we could come up with, we could come up with, because face it, there, there's what, 7 billion people on the planet, right? And we probably could come up with 7 billion different reasons why someone would come to visit a restaurant's website. And we can't do that. But we could at least think about the different groups that would be visiting the site and what their reasons are. Because all these people are going to have slightly different goals. All right? All these folks are going to have slightly different goals. All right? Someone from out of town, you know, might want a restaurant that is close to where they are staying, the hotel that they're staying. All right? They, they don't know, they don't want to, they don't want to travel through the, the, you know, the, the back roads to find a restaurant. They want something that is very easy to find because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to get lost. Someone with dietary restrictions obviously wants to see if the food meets their dietary restrictions. All right, what are the options that they have for people with those restrictions? All right, um, celebrating a specific event. You know, there's some places you go to for a kid's birthday party. Uh, some place that you might go to if it is your wedding anniversary. All right. Some place that you might go to if it's someone's graduation from college, right? All those places are celebrating some special event, but people are going to be looking for different things, you know. Um, Chuck E. Cheese would be a great place for a kid's birthday party, maybe, I don't know. But it wouldn't necessarily be a great place to take your spouse on their wedding anniversary, on your wedding anniversary, right? I don't think so, anyhow, all right? And then finally, you just have the generic, well, I'm looking for lunch, you know, and, and that sort of thing. My point of all this is, is that these people are going to have slightly different goals. Right? Not all going to have the same goals. Now, they, the goals may overlap, right? But this guy might not care too much about the kinds of ingredients that are in there. Whereas this guy will care about the ingredients. All right? All of them probably care about price to some level, right? I mean, I would assume even if you're rich, you know, you would prefer to pay less than to pay more, all right? On the other hand, uh, price is sometimes used as a gauge of the type of restaurant it is and might help someone if they're celebrating a special event. I doubt that there are many wedding anniversaries celebrated at Taco Bell, all right, for example. And, you know, you look at that and it's like, well, you know, for the 99 cent bean burrito, yeah, okay, that's probably not, and it might be unfair to judge that. that, that Taco Bell's burrito might be better than you would get at an expensive restaurant. But that's sometimes an indication of the kind of restaurant it is. All right. So my point here is, is that when we talk about the user, 
A mistake that many people make is to talk about the user as though there's one kind of person that's going to be visiting the site. The user wants to know this. The user wants to know that. Really? You need to realize that the user is actually some groups of users. All right? And it may be a little hard at first, but if you think about it, almost any topic that you want to talk about, there's going to be people coming at it from slightly different angles. So one of the steps in the design process underneath the goals is to identify three personas. Make up three fictional people that have different reasons for visiting your site. All right? And then try to figure out the subtle differences in their goals. And make sure that your goals address all of their needs to at least some degree. Now, are there still going to be people that you're not going to consider? Maybe. But at least you've done a better job than just trying to lump everyone into one category and talk about the needs of a user. You know, I could imagine, and I don't want to put words in your mouth or thoughts in your head, but I could imagine when I said, what are the kinds of people that are visiting a restaurant website, immediately you thought like, well, yeah, people that want to go there to eat. Who else would be there? When you think about it, there could be many different reasons, though, for that. Yes? Well, that's a great question. And the question is, um, do you want to make sure that you cover the widest perspective possible? And the answer is, sort of. All right? You want to maximize the coverage, but keep in mind that the pitfall of that kind of thinking is to say, I want to address every single possible scenario under the sun, and what problem would you run into if you tried to do that? You have too much information, clutter. So, I, I, I heard, I, I had a definition for something that was well designed before, and then I heard someone take my, they didn't take my definition, but they, they gave a similar definition that was even better. Um, I said that a good tool is a tool that allows you to do common things very easily. All right? So if you think about any kind of tool that you use, common things you can do easily with. All right? They extended that to say common things you can do easily, but less common things are still possible. So, for example, all right? If we look at the, these people, all of these folks are going to want to know what the hours are. All right? All of the people are going to want to know where it's located at. All the people at some point want an idea of the price. Maybe not the specific prices, but have an idea of the price. How could you indicate the price on a home page without showing numbers. You have a bracket. All right. What's the other obvious one? Right, maybe it's not obvious. I don't know. Obvious to me. Well, a picture of the restaurant. All right. You go and you look and you see a diner and, you know, again, Love diners, probably prefer them to fancy restaurants. But you see a diner, you have a certain expectation where the price is going to be. So right off the bat, you have some information about that versus you see chandeliers and harp players and, and, and uh, you know, uh, waiters in tuxedos and, and someone going around singing opera from, from table to table. You get a different idea of the price. 
So, and again, that was a little bit of a diversion. But the idea is, is you might, you want to try to accomplish, you want to try to maximize what you're doing because you know that if you try to do everything, you run the risk of overkill. You run the risk of trying to put content on your site that isn't going to add value. And if it doesn't add value, it adds clutter. All right? Any content that you add is going to add both clutter and value. The question is, is does it add more to the clutter side of the equation or more to the value side of the equation? So to answer your question, yes, you want to cast as broad a net as possible, but you want to avoid overkill and overcluttering. Now, if there was someone that doesn't fit these categories, and I can't really think of anyone in our case, but if there's someone that doesn't fit, if there was a kind of person that didn't fit in any of these categories and had different needs, how could you make their goals possible to achieve through the website? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that that's true. That might be something that would be useful to put somewhere on the site. But I guess what I'm saying is, what if there's someone that has, let, let me phrase it this way. What if there's someone that doesn't fit into any of the categories that we anticipated and they have needs to achieve their goals that we, they have goals that we have not anticipated and therefore we don't have any content on their site on our site to achieve their goals easily how can we at least accommodate them somehow give contact information exactly so in other words i'm not going to try to anticipate every possible need that anyone could have i'm going to go for as they say bang for buck i'm going to go to maximize coverage and still have an impact and still not to be over cluttered but I'm going to be aware that there's going to be some people that just don't fit this category all right um, someone wants to plan a surprise party where the where the, the guests dress up like waiters and jump out and yell surprise all right yeah that's a goal they want to figure out if the restaurants good for that or not but you're not going to design your website in that eventuality. But what do you do? You have a contact number. You have a contact form that says, hey, if you have any questions or if there's something you need to know that we haven't covered, here's the phone number to call. You know? and then, or, or here's a form that you can email in. All right? So to answer your question, the more important something is, and the more common that the goal is, the easier it ought to be to find. We should shoot for things beyond the most obvious goals, and we should try to cover a wide range. But we want to be aware and be concerned about not going in with overkill and not trying to anticipate every need. That is sort of one problem I see with many, many applications, not necessarily websites, but you see it on websites as well. Something like Microsoft Word. You can do like so many things with that, all right? And that's great, except, you know what? Usually I want to type up a very basic document that looks like that, or looks like this, all right? So if I can still do that, that's great. But if all those extra features get in the way of me doing something simple, then it's a problem. So sure, have information that covers as wide a degree of, of potential, potential goals as possible. But you know what? Don't do that at the expense of making the common goals very clear and very obvious. Did you have a question or a comment? OK. I thought I saw you raise your hand. All right. So, phase one in the strategy phase, phase one, the strategy phase, consists of
identify three kinds of users. They're called personas. Then identify three goals for the users and three goals for the sponsors of the site. That is the strategy phase. I mean, whoever it is that's making the page. So in other words, I would say organization, right? But not all websites are for an organization. I would say business, but not all websites are for businesses. You know, a nonprofit has a website, all right? Uh, an individual person could have a website. Um, someone that gives music lessons out of their home could have a website. Well, they're not really an organization. They're just, you know, someone that teaches piano, all right? So whoever is making the site, that's who I'm saying the sponsors of the site are. All right. The boss, yeah. Now in your case, you have to sort of wear two hats because you're the person making the site and you're making the site for some hypothetical situation that you've thought of. So you're, you're both. Now, I spent a lot of time talking about strategy and goals. Why do you suppose that is? Yeah, good planning and because it's so important. Right? That's the basis of everything. Once we've defined the goals, then we can start looking at like, well, what can we put on our site to help achieve those goals? And that's where we get into the scope section. Then how do we organize that information? Then what is our page generally going to look at like? And then finally, um, you know, what are rough drafts of the page? What I plan to do next time is cover the other four phases. And they won't take as long as this phase. We'll probably wrap them all up. I would then like to go in and, and create, a sim create parts of a design document for a restaurant. All right? Um, and, 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 and so that you see an example, see the process of developing one of these design documents and get a sense of what it's going to look like. So that will be on the agenda for Wednesday. Are there any questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab.